Hey guys, in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know in order to master Fiora and carry yourself to whatever rank you want. I know most of you probably aren't going to watch the whole video, which is totally fine. So I added timestamps at each of the most important sections so that you can skip around and find the part that you need. But I do encourage you to watch the whole thing because there are going to be invaluable pieces of information that we talk about regarding the secrets of mastering this champion. My name is Soda and I'm a high elo Fiora main. So if you enjoy the video, please hit the like button. This video took a lot of work and I would really appreciate it. This is your in-depth guide to Fiora. So first off, I thought we would talk about Fiora's identity to kind of understand the champion that we're working with. Fiora is a duelist that thrives in the side lane at all points of the game. If she gets an early kill in a 1v1, she is on her way to being an unstoppable threat in the top lane. She can be a bully in lane and become a dynamic split pusher that can only be stopped by a multi-man gank. She is really strong in solo queue because many players at all ranks don't understand how to effectively play against a split pusher, and that kind of pressure will create opportunities for you and your team to get picks, take objectives, and tear down some towers. Fiora prefers to be away from her team, applying pressure, but there are times where you are needed in team fights like around Baron or Soul Point. In these situations, Fiora is best used as a flanker to apply pressure on the backline, but she can also help peel her carries by putting her ultimate down on a tank or a fighter who dives the backline. And by either proccing the ultimate or getting the kill, you'll get a massive healing radius for your team, which will help give you an advantage to win the fight. Hey guys, before we get any further, I want to tell you about the Ticket to Diamond Blueprint and my private Discord where we do VOD reviews and coaching sessions. You can learn everything you need to know about how to climb in League of Legends on YouTube and the internet, but we have collected all of the best information and put it into one spot with this course. So come be a part of the private and exclusive community that is on the same journey as you are to get your dream rank. Also, if you join before the end of the season to make that end of season ranked push, use code season 11 for $35 off. I can't wait to see you all in the discord. As with all top laners, Fiora has some very easy matchups along with some very hard ones. We will go over a few of them and talk about different principles that you can use to take advantage of the easy matchups and find weaknesses even in the harder ones as well. Her first hard matchup is against Gangplank. I'll focus on him specifically for a second, but know that these principles and game tips also work against other champions like Jace, Lucian, and Teemo, who are all hard matchups for Fiora. Gangplank is very strong with Poke, which is one of Fiora's weaknesses. His Q is on a low cooldown, and his Sheen power spike is much, much stronger than two long swords on Fiora. The way you deal with this matchup and other ranged matchups is to chill out and farm until level 6. Take Doran's shield and second wind and just sit back and take as little damage as you can while getting as much farm as you're able. Focus on pulling the wave to your side of the lane so you can farm safely under the tower to gather XP and then look to all in after 6. Use your parry on the grasp cues or on his barrels. For other ranged champs, you can parry Lucian Q, Teemo Q because it's the ability that they often max first and it has a long travel time or cast time so you can prepare to use your parry even if you're on like 100 ping. Another reason why these matchups are so hard is because your engage length is pretty short. Now granted, if you get on top of them, you'll automatically win, but that's not an easy thing to do. So play back, let them push into you, and use the length of the top lane to your advantage so you can chase them down and have a true all in. This becomes much easier when you get Iron Spike Whip because the active can proc your ultimate giving you a small burst of speed, but we'll talk about items a little bit more in depth later. The easiest matchups for Fiora are matchups where she can parry the main CC ability. Champions like Volibear, Kled, Scion, Aurelia, Riven, and Camille are relatively easy if you're any good at Fiora because their main damage and CC abilities can be reposted and you can also use them to your advantage and dash into them like into a Scion Q or Riven's third Q with your W so that you can use your CC against them and start and engage. Fiora's main strength is punishing her opponent's positioning in the lane, like them being pushed up too far, and punishing their lackadaisical use of CC, so make sure you are looking to punish these basic abilities and get some free kills. I also have to admit that I recently figured out that you could parry Mordekaiser's ult. I was in Diamond 1 when I figured this out. I just accidentally did it one time, and I felt like the biggest idiot in the world. So yeah, if he tries to ult you, you have like half a second to cast Repose to cancel it and put it on a long cooldown, which has to be so tilting for more players. There are some matchups that should be avoided if possible because you have to be very skilled and look for small windows to have a shot at winning it. Some of these champions are Singed, Renekton, Jax, Wukong, and Set. Their CC is a little bit harder to guess for your W, which makes it hard to win short trades. Playing on ping makes it even harder to repost Wukong and Singed CC, so it comes down to guessing, and if you miss it, it gives them a large window to punish you. The same thing with Set and Renekton. Their stuns are almost instant cast if they don't telegraph this ability, so it's hard to dodge it, and if you miss your W, then they'll win that trade or fight. These are matchups where you need to chill out and hit vitals while farming and try to get some early jungle help. If you get a lead in these matchups, you'll blow the game wide open, but that's kind of hard to do unless they end into you or your jungle ganks once or twice. 
Now let's move on to Fiora's abilities. Fiora's passive puts a vital on nearby champions that Fiora has vision of. This vital lasts a little over 13 seconds and will reappear on another side of the champion if it isn't hit. Any damage done by Fiora will proc the vital doing base damage plus percent health true damage. And once the vital is hit, Fiora will gain a small burst of speed that decays over one and a half seconds. It's important to note that when a new vital is forming on a champion, it takes exactly 1.75 seconds to actually become active. You'll learn this timing as you play Fiora and get a feel for the champion, but there's also an audio cue that sounds whenever the vital goes live, so make sure you listen for that. Fiora's Q is her bread and butter ability. It is a lunge that does damage to the nearest champion that prioritizes enemy champions. This ability can be used on wards and towers, and if you hit a target with this ability, the cooldown is cut in half. So if you are chasing an enemy through the jungle or a minion wave, use your Q on those creeps to gain some distance and cut the cooldown in half. One thing to be aware of with your Q is that it will prioritize champions, so if you are under an enemy tower trying to last hit, you could accidentally hit your laner, which will draw tower aggro and potentially get you killed. So only use it under the enemy tower if you are ready to take aggro or do damage to them. Another interesting interaction is that Fiora can use all of her abilities while lunging. She can use her repost, activate her E, and put her ultimate on someone all while in the middle of her Q. Another little thing that is nice about Fiora's Q is that it will hit a target even if you don't have vision of it. So if a champion is in a bush and you lunge into that bush, it will apply damage. Now, there won't be a vital on the champion because you don't have vision of them, but you will hit them and put your Q on half the cooldown. Unfortunately, this doesn't work with wards, which makes zero sense to me, and I'm pretty sure it's a bug. So if it is, Riot, please fix this because I often know there's a pink ward in a bush, so I'll preemptively queue in there to start killing it, but it won't proc and it'll go on full cooldown, which is incredibly frustrating. Fiora's W is Repost. Now this is her most hated ability because it brings her to a stance where she is immune to all damage and all CC for 0.75 seconds. She cannot do anything during this duration, but she will shoot out her sword dealing magic damage in a short radius. This will slow her opponents and their attack speed by 50% for two seconds. This is a great way to do damage and apply a slow to your lane opponent in the early game to gain an advantage. However, this ability gets really juicy when you dodge CC and hit a champion with your strike. Instead of slowing them for two seconds, it stuns them for that duration. It doesn't even have to be crowd control from that a champion. You can use CC from a different champion to apply the stun to somebody else. This ability takes some time to master and some quick reflexes as well as some low ping, but once you get this down, it can totally turn the tides of fights. Fiora's E is blade work. When she uses it, she gains some attack speed and range on her next two abilities, as well as the first auto attack slowing and the second attack dealing critical strike damage. You can also use this on towers, making it easier to take them down, and her E will reset her auto attack timer, allowing her to auto attack cancel. We will look more at this in depth in the next section for combos. Fiora's ultimate is Grand Challenge. She puts four vitals on her target and the movement speed from proccing those vitals is also increased. If she hits a vital before the target dies or she procs all four vitals, then an area of healing spawns for her team. If she procs one vital, then it lasts for two seconds, but if she procs all four vitals, then that area will last for five seconds. This is what makes Fiora such a strong duelist in 1v1 situations, and we'll look at how to proc all four vitals as fast as possible in the combo section of this guide. All right, Fiora is a pretty linear champion when it comes to skill order, so this isn't going to get very crazy. You'll always start Q level one. There's literally no reason to start anything else level one, so you can level this in the fountain if you would like to, even though just for general practice, I don't usually do that. Level two, you wanna grab her W, the damage mitigation plus the slow is great for early fights, and it's also great if you're trying to cheese for an early kill. The damage plus the slow helps you hit your vitals in order to get that kill. After these levels, you're gonna take your E third and then max Q into E and then W. And and obviously you'll want to level your ultimate whenever you can, but that's basically her skill level order. It's Q, E, into W. What's up guys? In this part of the video, we're going to go over Fiora's combos and we're going to just, we're going to just start with some of her most basic ones um, and then go into some more of the complex ones. So to start for her basic combos, you just have her Q auto and then you can walk out. It's great for just early trades. Um, also, if you get close enough, you can also just Q auto. It's kind of a nice uh, animation cancel. Um, you can also queue any length that you want to. You can go the full length or you can, let's turn this down. You can go short as well. So and if I want to hit this vital, I can go all the way around or if I'm even closer and I want to hit it, I can just do a micro dash as well. It's really easy to get the damage off quick and you don't have to worry about the, the long dragging of the Q. It's not that big of a difference, but it helps. Uh, also, um, all damage that comes off your uh, can proc vitals. So uh, Iron Spike Whip or Gore Drinker can as well at a decent range too. This from this far away, you can proc it. Another short trade um, combo that you can use in lane is to look for a vital auto attack E hit it again and then wait for the Q and then go for the second vital. I just realized I did that with the auto refresh cooldowns on. So this is what it looks like more realistically at level 11. Once your Q is fully stacked, you're gonna wait for the vital to get on. You're gonna Q in, auto E, 
Iron Spike Whip, and then wait for the second one, and then your Q will be up as well to chase them down if you would like to. So again, you're gonna find the vital, Q in, auto attack, E, find the second vital, and then you have your Q if you wanna use for damage or to chase them down. Um, and you can use your active if you would like to, to pop it if you don't have a auto attack ready. So an all in combo that I like to use is the same one, except you will apply your ulti at the end of it. Uh, now I see a lot of people that just put their ultimate on or down on an enemy champion and start to go, you know, try to get some vitals. But what you can do for the most, uh, for the most damage is you can do this. So you have the uh, you have the vital, and so you'll engage by hitting your Q and a vital, and then you can proc it. Then you can you know auto attack E, use Iron Spike Whip and your other Qs to take it down. So if you have a vital that is in range, you can use your Q, you can use your Q, and then put it down in order to get uh, more damage, more true damage in. Um, some attack speed. And now sometimes if they're low, when you just need to put it down, that's fine. Um, but if you're trying to get the maximum amount of damage, make sure you hit the vital, then put it down. And then you can just get it as much as possible. And then you can use your iron spike whip to also uh, proc a vital if you need to. If you're trying to chase down an opponent and you are really struggling to, to get after them and your ultimate's down on them, one thing you can do if you, uh, like if you use your Q, but you're not gonna have the, the movement speed to get onto them, what you can do is use Let's get that back up. You can use your Iron Spike Whip or your Gore Drinker to proc it and then use your Q for a side one to get as much movement speed as possible. So the way this looks is you'll use an Iron Spike Whip here and then your Q and then you can run around and get all the damage down you need to uh, in a fight. So a great level two combo to use that's pretty basic is to Q in, use your W, and then you can follow them with auto attacks and wait for your Q to come off cooldown and do some damage early. Uh, that slow for two seconds, 50% slow, is really crippling and will help you win a lot of trades early. So again, you're gonna Q in, auto attack W. You can fit an auto attack whenever you want to. So you Q, do this if you can, and then do some damage. All right, now the way to proc your ultimate as fast as possible is to use um, your Q and your Iron Spike, Iron Spike Whip to get around them. So the way to proc it fast is to basically just do this. So your first one is your Q, then you use the rest and Iron Spike Whip in between your auto attack animations in order to get the damage down as fast as possible as you're kind of waiting for your Q to come back up. And you can use your, your second Q in that combo to either chase them down or hit the final proc if you need to. A quick little combo if you are trying to dash into somebody to negate CC and apply a stun or you need to slow somebody down is your Q into W. It extends the range of your W and allows you to move into the range. Let's say Riven is using her third Q right here. Currently, I'm out of range of where that's going to hit. So I can QW in, get the, the damage from the Q while applying the W, which will stun them, allowing you to get a lot of damage down and potentially look for a kill. One thing to be careful of when you're using your ultimate is not to proc it in the middle of your lunge if you're about to hit a vital. If you do that, this is what it will look like. You basically take the vital away before you put your ultimate down and the vitals from your ultimate will not have spawned in time. So make sure that you wait for the vital to proc, you hit it, and then you put it down. Another thing you can do under tower while your opponent is CSing, uh, if you don't wanna fully dash in and kind of stay safe, is to use your um, Gore Drinker um, while they're walking up for a minion. So say there's like a ranged minion right here and they're walking up with a good vital, you can use a uh, Gore Drinker to grab the damage and then kind of run out as they're you know, kind of trying to figure out what just happened. If there's a vital in a good spot, instead of lunging in and like risk getting stunned in tower range, you just walk up, use your Gore Drinker or Iron Spike Whip, and then get out. So this next combo is great for like an all in when you're just trying to dump all the damage that you can onto an opponent. Another quick combo you can use to really catch your opponent off guard and have your Q and W hit at the same time is to Q to, to flash QW. If you add your Iron Spike Whip at the end of that, it's a lot of quick damage. All right, y'all. Uh, now we're going to talk about the runes for Fiora. Uh, we're going to talk through uh, two primary runes that you can take as well as uh, a couple of secondary options and just kind of my favorite. Uh, but just to knock it out at the beginning, you're always basically going to take attack speed into adaptive force into armor or uh, magic resist depending on the lane that you're in. If you're not sure who you're against, you can take um, the rune that has the most, uh, you know, like if there's four AP on the other team, you can take 
um, MR, even if there's potentially uh, an AD laner against you, that's okay. Uh, but if you're totally unsure, you can just take health. Um, but generally, you're going to want to be taking armor. It's best uh, against minions, towers, and most of the laners you're against will be um, AD. And uh, there's a lot of AD junglers as well. These are the primary um, little buffs you're going to get from your runes. As far as primary goes, Conqueror is what I take 90% of the games that I'm in. Uh, sometimes Fleet Footwork will be a good option. Fleet Footwork is getting a major buff in patch 11.17, so I might go back to this in some matchups, specifically in tank matchups like Maokai, Malphite, uh, Orn, uh, tanks that are really good at like poking you out, specifically Malphite and Orn. Um, and the mobility plus the healing just helps you sustain a little bit more in lane to the point where they literally can never catch you and never kill you and you can fight on your dime. Um, also, Triumph is really good. Uh, sometimes I'll, I've messed around with Presence of Mind and it feels good. Uh, Fiora doesn't have a ton of crazy mana issues if you can manage it relatively easily. Um, and the potential for tower dives um, and just you know, restoring health while you're super low from Triumph is always just, you know, gonna edge out presence of mind, especially with some builds like Essence Reaver into um, Immortal Shield Bow, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but usually I will take Triumph. So this is kind of what a general um, rune page looks like. Also, the all three of the legend um, runes are viable. Uh, a lot of the times I will take adaptive or legend bloodline um, because of the lifesteal. Uh, Fiora is a very heavy, she's very heavily re reliant on um, lifesteal. So having it a little bit stronger from this rune helps a lot. Also attack speed helps a ton. And this is a little bit more reliable, uh, but if you know you're into matchups where they're likely not gonna take Bramble Vest or if you're in an ELO where they're not gonna build, you know, anti-heal, then you can probably take advantage of this, um, this rune. Otherwise Alacrity is probably a little bit safer um, and as with most melee top laners, you're almost always going to want to take last stand. Uh, yes, as Fiora, if you get fed, you will be doing all of your damage at 100 HP, and you're probably not going to get low because of how much you heal. Uh, but especially in the laning phase to get those leads, you fight constantly, and last stand will usually, over the course of 100 games, in 80 to 90 of those games, this will do more damage than Coup de Grasse. So last stand is usually what I take here. Um, a general rune page that I'll take is something like this or something like this, depending on the game I'm in and who I'm against, as well as occasionally, you know, in one out of every 10 games taking fleet footwork, which might go up to, you know, two out of every 10 uh, with this buff to that rune, which I think is actually heavily needed. Uh, recently, I've been taking Resolve on Fiora in tough matchups where I'm poked down a lot. Like I said, Malphite, Jace, Teemo, Lucian, Gangplank. I'm always taking second wind here. Um, a lot of... Um, you know, tier lists and, you know, U.GG, OP.GG, they all take Demolish here. Um, but from my personal experience and from a lot of high ELO Fiora mains that I know and I've talked to and I've looked at their pages, uh, very few are actually running Demolish, especially since the nerf when um, there's a cooldown on it and it's not on uh, refreshed on new towers, which means that it has, you know, a little bit less um, help for a champion like her who has the potential to take down multiple towers uh, in a split pushing session, we'll say. Uh, champions that can have shorter bursts against towers, like tanks, you know, if they have, you know, good wave manipulation, uh, demolish is great, but personally, I don't like it with Fiora. Uh, so I will usually take uh, second wind or bone plating, depending on whom I'm against. Um, if I'm against, you know, heavy engage, uh, let's say that's. Um, Trying to think, uh, a Riven would be really good for this. Gwen would be really good. Uh, you would take Bone Plating to mitigate the damage because they can't do a lot from afar to proc it. Usually, if they're trying to engage, you will be able to benefit from Bone Plating. So then you go Second Winter Bone Plating into either Revitalize or Unflinching. If there's a ton of CC on the other team, like a Malphite or an Orn, and you know into an Elise or something, I'll take Unflinching. Uh, but if there's not a ton, uh, you'll want to take Revitalize for the added healing. So if you're against Riven, I would probably take these two runes because of her stun and her knockup. If you're in a lane against, you know, Gangplank and there's a Karthus jungle, I'll take Second Wind and Revitalize to uh, maximize the healing as well as the damage mitigation. Now, there are times where taking Ignite makes sense. Unfortunately, Nimbus Cloak recently just got a nerf. Um, but if you are going to take Ignite, this is the page that you're going to want to take. It allows for great early cheeses, as well as just having the damage and the mobility and the, the ability haste later in the game. That's just kind of great quality of life. Uh, personally, I think Resolve is just more consistent and a bit stronger. Um, but if you're, you know, I'll probably really only take this, you know, this lineup if I'm smurfing or something. Um, you don't really take Domination anymore. You could take in Inspiration if you're going the Essence Reaver build to get an early Sheen, you know, going something like this. 
But like I said, that's just not as ideal. Fiora really utilizes um, the durability from the Resolve Tree. So like I said, this is more of something that I would take um, compared to the other ones. Alrighty, now let's talk items on Fiora. This is gonna be a fun one. So there's a lot of interesting itemization that you can take with Fiora. Uh, thankfully, uh, there is more of a consistent path that you can take, but we're gonna look at a bunch of different things, uh, more than what I have just here in my own uh, Fiora item section, and we can talk about it. So uh, in most games, 90% of games, you're gonna take uh, one pot, Doran's Blade into a Trinket. Uh, in some situations, if you're taking second wind primarily, let's say, you're into a Lucian Gangplank or Teemo or something, then if you're taking second wind, I would highly consider taking Dorn Shield. It will just help you sustain in lane a ton more. And especially if you're taking Fleet Footwork, you're gonna heal a butt ton from those three things. Um, but like I said, you know, in 80% of your games, you're gonna go Dorn Shield is just a lot better for skirmishing. Dorn Shield is just more of surviving those poke champions that you're just not gonna be able to kill early. You might also take it against some tanks like Malphite or Orn. Um, you're almost going to always want to back and take Iron Spike Whip first because the active is so crucial in her dueling ability and getting those vital vitals procced. Plus the damage just helps her. Like once you get this and you hit level six, you legitimately have a, you, you, you threaten your lane opponent by, you know, a hundred to zeroing them with your ultimate. If they're at your tower, you can just chase them down, do a ton of damage and pretty much kill them. Uh, after that, I usually like to go into phage. I don't mean to add that. Um, you know, the durability attack damage is great. Uh, Kindle Gem is awesome because of the ability haste. Unfortunately, Fiora doesn't benefit from this a crazy amount. It's obviously great quality of life, but you're always going to take this third right before you go into the full Gore Drinker. Uh, the Gore Drinker build is the primary one I'm running currently. It's kind of the most, uh, let's say, official safe Fiora build right now, and will do the most damage in team fights um, and into bruisers and tanks. We'll look at, uh, you know, a couple other options, which are very fun to run in a second. Um, after that, you're gonna go into Ravenous Hydra. You'll take Tiamat first into either um, uh, Caulfield's Warhammer or uh, Vampire Acceptor. If there's a lot of range on the other team, you'll take Caulfield's Warhammer first. After your team at, if there's a lot of melee champions and they don't have a ton of anti-healing, then you'll go into Vamp second for just some more survivability. Um, and what I have been doing is generally my third item would be Steric's Gage. That's because, you know, the durability in the late game team fights where you're fighting around Elder Dragon or, you know, Soul Point and Baron, excuse me, uh, for, for Soul, uh, Elder or Baron, this is just crucial. This allows you to stay alive and heal like there's no tomorrow. But on patch 1117, uh, this item, Hullbreaker, is getting buffed. And so, I think these two are gonna be very even when it comes to which item you're gonna to decide to take for your third item on Fiora. And it's basically basically gonna come down to this. Are you looking to split push as much as possible when your team is gathering around objectives or will you be with your team walking to those objectives? So if you primarily have a poke composition, you don't have a front line, you don't have engage, you're basically gonna to want to split push with Holebreaker. If you have an amazing team fighting team and you're gonna win most of your team fights, then you're gonna to wanna to take Steric's Gage. It's just game dependent on what you're going to do i love this item just because it's fun you feel like you're you're you know you're using the game's items to your advantage in, in your play style steric's gauge just feels more of like a default item but they're both great so it just depends team fighting steric's gauge gauge uh split pushing a uh, hull breaker if you're playing fiora you will be split pushing a lot um but like i said there are times where you just need to group with your team and just win that way um Usually I will finish my boots after uh, my gore drinker and I'll go play the steel caps or mercs depending on, you know, who I'm going to be fighting the most. If I'm against a Jax, um, you know, I'm going to be taking play to steel caps 100% of the time. I might even get them early to help with the early skirmishes. If I'm against, you know, Merc or, uh, you know, Kennen or Lissandra or Singed, I'll probably rush mercs as well. Um, to kind of help with durability. Uh, if I'm in a ranged matchup, I will consider getting full tier two boots before I finish my Gore Drinker um, because in ranged matchups, boots are damaged because you just need the mobility, especially on Fiora, to get to your target because your lunge is so short and then stick on them once you get there. Uh, your damage is plenty enough. You just need the mobility to get on top of them. Uh, so like I said, if you're in a ranged matchup, you can see how it's going and see if you need to get tier two boots before you complete your first mythic item. Sometimes it can be very beneficial. So after you finish your third item, if you go Hull Breaker, uh, you probably are going to want it to go into Sterex Gauge uh, fourth. Um, but if not, a couple other options you have are Death Stance and GA. 
These are the two that I you know, build most of the time as my fifth item. Death Dance, if you're into a Zed, Kha'Zix, Nocturne, um, Talon, uh, champions like this, Death Dance is an amazing counter, especially on a champion like Fiora who heals like crazy. You're totally gonna use this um, this item to its full advantage. And so look to take this um, if you're a little bit ahead. Now, if you're just trying to survive and you're maybe the most fed uh, person on your team, you could look to take Guardian Angel. Obviously the revive, the saving grace uh, passive, item passive is terrific and it will win games. Um, and it's also a little bit cheaper, but Death Dance Fiora is one of those champions that just utilizes this ability or this item like there's, you know, better than basically any other champion in the game. And so it's a great fourth item if you don't need the passive from Guardian Angel. Uh, if you are against a lot of heavy AP, uh, in place of your fifth item, you can take Mob Melmordius or just get Hex Drinker for the shield. Uh, obviously great item. And these are kind of always the, the items that I'm gonna pick. And then for my sixth item, I will just fill in one of these items, whether, you know, which one I didn't get, Sterax, GA, Death Stance, or Ma, depending on this game state, you know, that you're in. At that point, items don't really matter. It's all about winning those team fights to win the game. So now another fun build that you can go if you're into, you know, a very squishy composition. Let's say you're into a Yasuo, um, there's a Graves Jungle, I don't know, LeBlanc, you know, there's like very little frontline on the other team and um, you're not gonna have any trouble getting to them. One thing you can go is the Essence Reaver build. This used to be meta at the beginning of the season. It's kind of fallen off with Gore Drinker getting buffed. Um, but these two items are terrific together. Uh, with Immortal Sh with Eth Essence Reaver, you never have to worry about mana. The burst from Sheen is incredible, plus the crit. It just does so much damage. You have 40% crit chance after this with a ton of attack speed, 40% added attack speed plus 100 AD. And when you have uh, Immortal Shield Bow, your survivability is insane. So when you have, you know, uh, messing this up, when you have, you know, these steel caps along with this and you're into a Jax or like a you know yasuo you're gonna be living for forever it, it's an incredible build i love going this into very squishy team compositions it's not great into tanks um i think or, or if you're gonna be team fighting a lot because this build will just always outshine it and like i said this is the build you're gonna go 80 percent of your games um, but this is a great option and it's a ton of fun now a third option you have is to go um into iron spike whip and then into stride breaker Stridebreaker got a little bit of a change where you don't dash with your slow, but if you are able to get on top of your opponent, you do slow them and it's very, very efficient. Uh, you would just get this in place of Gore Drinker and then go into Hydra and Holebreaker or Sterex, et cetera, afterwards. Now, and this is for compositions, which hopefully uh, they're probably not gonna go through. There's gonna be a dodge, but if there are three to four range champions on the other team, you're against a Teemo, there's a Lucian mid, Nidalee or Graves jungle, and you just, you don't need to worry about the damage. You just need to survive and CC them as long as possible. Then Stridebreaker is what you're going to want to go. It has durability with the health, has the attack speed to add to your damage, and the active is incredible. It slows them by 40% for three seconds, and it comes off cooldown every 15 seconds. You can use this, you know, multiple times in a team fight and really just ensnare your opponents for a lack of a better term. Um, so these are, you know, you might take this one every 20 games maybe because usually those games are going to get dodged um, because you just naturally have the advantage. Uh, this one's fun. You'll take it 20% of the time. And then this one, you'll take 80% of the time. So this is the general overview for items. Uh, I have Immortal Shield Bow here, not for the full item, but for Executioner's Calling. If you are in, you know, if you're against a Vladimir or shoot, other champions, because all of them heal in this game, especially Fiora as well. I understand that. Just take an early Executioner's Calling, you know, uh, if you're into a Dr. Mundo, just buy this item early. You can do it before you finish your Mythic item, and it'll allow you to get a lot of kills. It'll allow you to punish your opponents. A lot of low elo players don't buy this item enough, and they don't buy the AP version enough when they're um, playing an AP champion, which is Oblivion Orb. So just please buy Executioner's Calling and just sit on it all game. It will help reduce healing in team fights and hopefully multiple players on your team are getting these items to help reduce the healing and help you win. Um, so like I said, I have that primarily just for uh, this item, not for the full uh, mortal reminder. But at the end of the game, if I need to get this, I will. But hopefully my support has uh, anti-heal, my mid laner has uh, Morella Namicon, et cetera. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it for the build. If you have any questions, go ahead and uh, ask them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back to them. Um, if I'm able to.
Great, y'all. In this part of the video, we are going to be watching a Fior replay, and we're going to be talking through different elements. Uh, I wish this was my own gameplay. Um, it is not because uh, today a new patch came out, and I am needing to get this video up tomorrow morning, and I don't have time to play a game myself. Um, so I just took a this is a vod from one of my friends. Uh, Dr. Ricky, he's a Diamond 2 Fiora, and the reason I picked this game in particular is because he did well into a hard matchup. As we can see, he's currently getting level 1 all in by Darius. And he almost got killed. Um, and so this is, a, this is a tough matchup for Fiora, um, especially in high elo, and so uh, he ends up dominating. So we're going to look at kind of how he does it in the early game. And so I think the first thing that we can look at is if we go back a little bit... Um, Against level one cheesers like Darius, Jax, Yasuo, Gwen, um, even some other champions. Why is my mini map blurry? It's fine on the video. Against champions like this, you have to, uh, when you leash, you have to go around. You need to path up into your lane. You cannot path into the river um, because they are likely trying to cheese you. Um, and he ends up blowing his flash and getting down to one HP um, and, and forced to use his pot here. Um, that luckily Darius does not have flash. He had ghost ignite. Um, I mean, maybe not luckily cause he should have died here. Um, but just, uh, something to be aware of. And so now he's just going to try to get some vitals, heal back up a little bit, but he has to be so careful. Uh, especially if Darius takes E level two, um, and he does not have her post. He's totally, uh, susceptible to getting killed here, getting all in. So he's watching out for the Q staying out of range. Looking to just survive here. Uh, he's a little bit lucky about that part. Missed the vital. And so we're going to kind of watch through for the next eight minutes to see what he does to get back in this game. Um, he's at a mega disadvantage. Uh, my guess is he doesn't actually recall here. Because uh, Darius should not let him. Uh, it was actually genius. Able to get around for the proc. Misses the vital, but that's okay. Uh, so there's no way that Darius should let him base there, which he doesn't. Um... Uh, He's able to heal um, comfortably and then recall. So he's just going to last hit. He's probably going to either recall and then TP in so he doesn't miss any minions. Or he's going to fast push into Darius and then recall. Uh, I'm curious to see what he does personally. And then we can talk about why. We see Graves is on the top side of the map taking Scuttle right now. And he's going for the slow push. So in this situation, now that the wave is pushing back towards his opponent, he's only last hitting the minions. Realizes that Darius is going to come back to lane in a moment. And so he decides to recall and he's probably just going to TP in um, in order to finish um, clearing out this wave. Thankfully, he sees Graves going box side, bot side, so he shouldn't worry about the TP here. We can see down here that Graves is here. Um, if he didn't know where he was or he saw him on the top side, uh, teleporting in this situation is very dangerous. It basically communicates to the jungler that you are super prime for a gank and you have no way to get back to lane if the gank is successful um, which will make you lose a lot of xp and gold so a uh, good move on his part he drops a ward just in case even though he should still his vision probably didn't need to ward right there his team knows where graves is that's minor nitpicking he's just gonna slow push this in he could probably just fast push or hard push this into the tower which it's gonna do maybe look to get some deep vision there's not a ton you can do against darius under tower He's not really going to be able to go for that vital either. So he's kind of just mute here in the top lane. Not really able to do a ton floating around. Tough, tough situation here. I would have um, put a deeper ward. So he could have saved the ward that he just placed and put it a little deeper. Able to repost the Q damage, which is huge. Darius is looking for the all in. He knows it, so he's running away. He doesn't have ghost. Oh, he's able to apply the... Apprehend, I believe, Darius W. Backs up. So now that the wave crashed into the tower, um, he knows that it's going to come back to him. So he could, in theory, uh, it's not a cannon mini wave, so it'd be super risky, but he could, in theory, recall really fast and then just queue back to lane. Uh, but he's probably healthy enough. Graves is not on the top side to dive him. So he's just playing back right now. He's waiting for the wave to push into him. There's no reason to even walk close to the Darius right now. If he has timed the ghost, he knows that Darius can just pop it, run at him with Ignite, um, and he does not win that trade. Uh, plus, he already used his teleport to get back to lane, and so it'd be very foolish, and he would lose about, let's see, there's seven minions. He would lose about 12 to 13 minions if he did that, uh, and he would fall very, very far behind and would not be able to win a 1v1 
um, until later in the game. So he's just staying out of range, grabbing CS while he can. He'll collect it under tower and then reevaluate from there. Darius is going to recall. It's a good call by him. So unfortunately, Darius has not been able to punish uh, this Fiora, even though she's had a couple of openings in order to do it. Auto Q to take the minion. Nice. Able just to do an auto and a short Q in order to get the CS. He should have autoed that melee right there. Still is able to secure it. So we have a couple more minutes of the early game. Let's see. Let's check uh, CS differential here to see where we are at. He's up by two, uh, but the wave will push into Darius and he'll be able to take a look or uh, finish up the wave. I'm going to pause it quick because it looks like they're about to fight. Uh, let's see what happens. So if does have the wave here, uh, Darius has Ghost and Ignite. Misses the repost on Darius Q, which is really bad. Uh, Fjord should not win this, even with the healing. Darius, yeah. So in that situation, uh, I mean, Darius was able to flank in and kill him. Um, if he would have reposted Darius' first Q here, I think I can probably play this in quarter speed. So I'll show you... In this situation, it's not looking good for Fiora, but because he has a massive minion wave uh, and Darius' ghost, you're not really going to run away from this, so fighting it is your best option. So, puts the ult down. He pops his repost a little bit too early and takes a ton of damage from uh, Darius Q. Uh, just save it for that. It's hard to time Darius' pull and his E, um, so if you save your repost for the Q, you can mitigate most of his damage and plus the slow from w will make it hard for him to auto attack because of the attack speed slow as well making it harder to get stacks down on you uh, so you can easily get um, your ultimate down and either run away or finish the kill um, in this situation but unfortunately he gets down to 400 hp because he misses that but if at this point he would have probably been at 75 percent hp and he could just auto with his minions hit these vitals and then take him down um, that's why in matchups like darius you want to repost um, the damage from the Q, not the CC, because it's harder to predict. It's more reliable, and without it, Darius, it's harder for Darius to apply the CC. Like, look, if he auto sim and the Q is through here, you would have had enough, would have had enough H HP to live. Um, unfortunately, Darius should play this well, um, and so we're gonna kind of cut back to uh, what it does. So Dar Darius is able to pull the wave, create a freeze, even though this is too big. This is gonna crash into him, but it's denying a lot of minions from Fiora. Um, and gonna have to walk all the way back to lane while he loses all this. Very well done by the Darius. Able to get a couple here. Um, but Darius is probably gonna get that is such a risky play. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even try to pull something off like that. He needs to back up and wait for it to to come to him. Darius is gonna hit level eight before Fjord hits level seven in this situation, so. Really not looking great. He knows he needs to get the fruit. And this is it's just going to be a tough spot for him to be in. The other team is ahead. Uh, spoiler alert, he does come back. And so we're going to see how he comes back from this deficit here in the early game. So he's allowing the wave to push to him. Four minions to his three. So the wave will be pushing into Fior here. Um, Jerry says no summoner spells. Fior should know that for about another minute, minute and a half. And so... Just, what the heck was that Q? Just waiting for the wave to push into him so that he can um, grab it, farm up, and hopefully he can get a Vi gank here. Like, he's into a... Like, if Darius pulled there, he definitely should have gone for it. Even if he gets reposted, he doesn't die. Um, Darius is able to roam free. Uh, look for the Vi. Red team is playing this very, very well. Using their advantages to get even more ground in the enemy jungle. Take some camps. Threaten the Vi. I mean, there's gonna be a fight here though. Let's see what let's see what Fjord does here in the fight. They're pretty far behind. Yeah, like Vi's already down. Going for the Darius. Is he able to pop the ulti? I mean, maybe he can. Is able to finish him off with the help of Vlad. If Darius wasn't so separated from his team, that would have been super free. I'd say if I were a Kali, I would go in on that too. Still has her post up. So he gets a lucky two kills because of that fight. 
Um, basically lucky that Vladimir was able to 1v2, um, trade his, trade himself before going down. And now he gets to push this into the tower and hopefully to deny at least a couple of minions from Darius. Um, Graves is aware of what's going on and he's either going to grab Krugs and go into him or just go to red and let Darius come back and get it. This is the primary way the early game is going. Remember, if they're, you're against a, a laner that's going to cheese you like Darius, go around, don't run towards. Uh, my guess is that he dies here. It's just not much you can do about that. Not much you can do. All right, well, let's skip towards the mid game um, to see what he does. Uh, like we can see, he is not ahead in any manner. I think he is two and two, uh, down 10 CS. So um, we'll go. We'll skip to the mid game now and see what he does to get back in it. All right, we skip forward just a tad, uh, only to about 12 minutes. Um, no towers have fallen yet, but I did want to skip here because of a big play that's about to happen with Graves and Darius and the Rift Herald. Um, and this is basically when the mid game starts. And so I thought it would be a good point. Uh, so as we know, Fiora is luckily the same level as Darius, even though Darius has um, been able to um, just get a little bit more than her. Uh, just got just died to a gank, ran back to lane, and now Graves is dropping the Herald. This is a situation where you, when you know that the Herald is taken, you need to ward behind you and probably just give up the tower. But he tries, is able to kill the Darius. Graves dives in with Fiora help. And that's just red team throwing it at that point. I'm not really sure what the the Graves was doing there. They probably could have just killed Fiora. Um, anyways, able to get the kill. Um, he's going to be able probably to get three plates right here. Darius does not have TP. If he gets any less than two, I'll be disappointed. But I expect him to, to plow through this tower. Potentially take it, even though I don't think he has... You know, he doesn't have the minions for that. He'll get two... Yeah, I think he's going to go for another one here before recalling. Okay, he knows he needs to back off. Okay, so he's going to back off 13 minutes into the game. Let's get to minute 15 when the first tower falls to see what he does here. So he ends up taking his tower and recalling. So let's keep going a little bit more. So on the map, if we want to look at macro really fast, uh, Darius was able to clean up the wave and push it back into the tower, uh, which is low. It's good that Fiora's running up to grab it. Mid lane, both towers are still up, and bot lane, both towers are still up. So in this situation, uh, Fiora should just keep to uh, should look to keep pressing her advantage in the top lane, and then look to um, potentially fight the third dragon here. Um, but even though she's not really needed, uh, with Graves not having flash and Darius not really able to one v one her. Um, he should just keep shoving waves into the top lane and stealing Krugs, red buff, and taking Rift Herald when it comes up. And so uh, we're going to play this at one or two times speed to kind of watch what happens here. Because at this point, it's basically just a macro game. I don't know how to pull up timers for Dragon. I'm assuming it's soon. And so he's pushing. He's wearing that brush. Darius, like I said, cannot 1v1 him in this point. Because Fiora got a couple lucky kills, he's going to take Krugs. Darius is going to have some help. Fiora knows something's up. It's smart just to run away. Vi does a great job of shadowing um, the laner that is pushed up. They're able to get a double kill. Keep pushing. Graves is on red buff. Okay, he's going to end up recalling here. He had just used TP to get back to lane. Now, this is very interesting because usually if you're ran back up here, he could threaten the TP for Dragon that's going to spawn in about 45 seconds. Um, but instead, he wants to keep pressuring the top lane. He wants to draw Graves and Ash into this lane so that his team can get a free objective, which is exactly what you need to do as a split pusher. Gets, gets the freest kill. Was able to punish the Darius for using his, um, I believe it, his E is pulling whatever that is. Um, recklessly grabs it. Dragon is coming up soon. He's able. He's just going to heal off the wave. Uh, waste the. Say waste his repost a bit recklessly, right? In that situation, um, when you see here that's that Sona is coming, or when you see her on the map, just 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 back off. 
if Graves is being an idiot without flash up, he's probably not trying to 1v1 you. He's trying to wait for one of his teammates to go. Plus, you don't see anybody in the bot jungle, so they're probably hovering towards the top side. Um, so be looking at your map. Look, see where the, the, the players of the other team are rotating to um, and how they're adjusting the current game state. Thankfully, his team is able to trade an objective, but they do probably lose Rift Herald here because of the reckless play. Um, at this point, Asim is so far ahead that they're probably going to win anyways, but it's important to recognize. So he ends up spawning again. Uh, his teammate has already shoved the bot lane into the enemy tower. There's no reason for him to run there. Uh, he should clean up mid here as he's going to. Clear out the ward, please. He's not clearing out the ward. Okay, this is, this is just trivial. They're not going to kill... Wait a minute. Oh my gosh. Graves. I was going to say there's no way that they kill Graves here. But they did because he's an idiot. Anyways, what should have happened there is that he cleans up this mid mid wave, uh, cleans out this war, and then runs top and then starts his push again. Um, probably trying to get some more vision. Uh, the red team is able to, to reclaim some vision in their top jungle. Uh, take it, replace it with his own. Pink ward, trinkets, keep pushing and taking um, towers, and then allow your team to, to apply pressure on the other side of the map. Uh, thankfully, they're able to get Baron, and they're going to be able to end on this point. And so this is kind of the late game, with Fjord being ahead. Um, the early game and the mid game are so important because they dictate what the late game looks like. Uh, the late game is the most um, impre uh, unpredictable part of the game because there's so much that happens before it. Um, but at this point, with Baron... Fiora's just going to look to play away from her team and apply pressure and hopefully take this tower. I wasn't say I don't think he all ends here, but he his, he has too much damage. What items does he have? Let's see. Okay, so he has a full Hydra at this point, plus his Swifty boots to deal with the slow from these champions. Um, and this is one thing I really like about Dr. Ricky. One thing that he does do is he buys the Boots of Swiftness when he is um, uh, into matchups with uh, not a ton of hard CC, but a lot of slows. If we look at the other team, they have, they, you have a Kali slow, Ash slow, Grave slow, and then um, Darius slow. And so getting Boots of Swiftness for the extra chase ability, kiting ability um, is just a, a really, really nice. So there's a lot that's going on here. Uh, basically, they just, they just win a team fight. As Fiora, um, you should be split pushing a lot, looking to apply pressure in the side lane, but do not be afraid to join your team um, in a team fight when you have, you know, champions like Vladimir and Sivir and Rakan who are great at like multi-man engages and team fighting ability. Uh, you're strong enough to dish out a ton of damage anyways in a team fight. And so joining and not letting them fight 5v4s is really, really crucial. So they're going to end up just winning the game at this point. Um... Yeah, traditionally in the, at the end of the game, in the late game, you're going to want to just apply pressure in a side lane. Like, let's say Baron was up right now. They weren't able to get a cheese Baron. You would want to be in the bot lane with your TP ready in order to apply pressure. Um, if two or three people come, you can run away um, and let your team get Baron. Uh, you can run away and TP into Baron. Um, you can keep pushing. If they're trying to like, if they're just kind of waiting around Baron for something to happen, you start to take free towers. You can dive. If Darius was here, Fiora would just dive her or dive him and just take a lot of objectives for free. Um, but unfortunately, the Graves was in a, the wrong place at the wrong time. They gave up Baron early, and he got to kind of play easy macro for free um, from that mistake. But now he's just he's just trying to bear, burn up another wave. There's no reason for him to be with his team in the mid lane right now. Um, I don't know why Vi recalled there. So there's three people here. You don't really want to fight 1v3s as Fiora. 1v2s you can do while you're fed. 1v3s are a little bit harder, can be done, uh, but they're not reliable. In this situation, this is a big kill that you're giving up. Um, your team is hopefully going to be able to take mid inhib off of it. Um, actually, maybe not even. It's just not really worth. So be careful. You don't When people come to your lane, you don't just have to die for it. You can back off, wait for them to go, rotate to mid to help out defend it, and then you can apply pressure again. Like I said, at this point, they're so far ahead where macro doesn't even matter. Um... But just trying to point out these mistakes that he's a diamond two player great at fiora 56 win rate on 1200 games or something diamond high diamond two um but there are still mistakes that y'all can learn from whether you're in bronze silver gold platinum diamond in order to uh take advantage of these things um in order to get some extra wins so general principles for the late game is that you want to play away from the major objectives 
right? So Dragon's about to spawn. In this situation, Fjord would want to be top lane with her teleport again. You don't want to fight in the 1v3s. You want to fight maybe a 1v2 if it's a support and someone that you can easily, you know, kill. Otherwise, if a lot of people come for you, Fjord's fast, especially if you're building Swifty Boots like like Ricky does here, just run away. There, there's no reason for you to stick around. Just keep, just run away, reposition, you know, take Krugs, get some, you know, vision back here, whatever, hang out for five to 10 seconds, and then go back in, push another wave. Um, and you're basically going to wait until your the enemy team makes a mistake in their positioning and you either get free mid or free top, or you can, or your team can collapse on a couple of uh, stragglers as well. You also, in this situation, um, Darius is way too far pushed up for this objective, so he's going to get collapsed on soon. Um, but unfortunately, Fiora's team is going to end here. So, um, yeah, guys, this is it. This is how you kind of play the early, mid, and the late game as Fiora. If you want to see more videos like this where we kind of dive in and watch replays and talk about mistakes that a champion, uh, a person is making, um, the proper ways to play a matchup or something, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for make it, making it to the end of this guide. I have no idea how long this is going to be, probably a long time, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. As always, check out the Ticket to Diamond Blueprint for like a bajillion of these, way more of these that we do there and the shot to, to have us look at your own gameplay um, in Discord as we're doing these coaching sessions and VOD reviews. So guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, it has been Snoda, and I will see you in the next video.